Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my beautiful, illustrious people. Welcome to this place I call the Mental House Without Walls. With your host, the Minister of Soul, Khadija. Listen, y'all. Right now, I'm just so happy that um, Damar uh, Hamlin's GoFundMe toy drive that was at 220000 has gone up to like $7 million now in donations as the money continues to pour in following the Bill Safety Cardiac Arrest during Monday night's game. Um, it's beautiful that the underprivileged children um, that he had aimed to hit 2500 in December but has now raised millions now, you know, and for the un- underprivileged families and children who are going to benefit, uh, may God bless you and may this be a special blessing for you. I mean, it's just hit an astonishing seven million. Um, and so an update is that the 24 year old Hamlin has made progress. In intensive care, according to a family, a friend, and representative, Jordan Rooney. Now, that's just according to him. So, we all know what happened. He collapsed on the field in the first quarter. And, then, you know, the moment after he tackled uh, somebody. And D. Higgins, immediately aftermath of Monday's shocking scenes, a GoFundMe Hamlin set up in December resurfaced. <clears throat> where he outlined a plan to raise $2,500 to buy toys for disadvantaged children for the holidays amid the pandemic. It's beautiful. This man died on the field twice. And believe it or not, I don't care how they the elite try to fix it, they wanted the guys to play. After about five minutes... The man was dead on the field, and they had to revive him twice. Okay, twice. He was dead. And the NFL knew that. But just like that same mindset that Skip had, um, oh, this is such an important game, we can't. And I'm hoping that people understand to see the elite in action. Because when you saw the guys on the field, regardless of their color, regardless of any of those things, they were they were a, a camaraderie, and it didn't matter their team. They were family. They were all feeling the same pain. They, they transcended any type of color or any type of feeling besides concern. But not the elite. Those elitists, which were your slave masters. And it's amazing to me when some of y'all can't recognize it. And y'all think it hasn't it hasn't gone away. And you get mad at people like Colin Kaepernick. Or you think people like Jerry Jones. It, it amazes me. History just repeats itself. It just changes names. Changes the way they do things. Somebody said these athletes ain't number high priced slaves. Okay, so you can look at the white slaves down there as as your Irishmen. (laughs) Okay, that's all. Um, What Skip said was the heart of him. And he goes a lot talking about the black woman who raised him and, you know, as if that gives him a pass, you know, and that because makes him so sensitive. It doesn't. Black people had to... uh, nurse you from their breasts 
That's what slavery done. When their own babies wanted to suck. They had to suck. Let people like you suck, Skip. So you still have that elitist mindset. And you don't even know it. Because it's an unconscious bias. That's how deep it is. All those black guys going out there. 70%. What is, what's the percentage of the lead? And then what's the percentage of the owners? And they had the nerve to think they could go back on the field after five minutes. See what I'm saying? And it's like, y'all ain't nothing but some, a, a bunch of Coke bottles lined up. One of them half empty, throw it out, put another one up there. And they have to be that way to continue to be elitist. You understand what I'm saying to you? I hope that guy that called out the NFL, I can't think of his name right now, but I, I hope that they don't come down too hard on him. Because he said it. They try to make us play after five minutes. Get yourself together. Players was like, fuck you. We're not playing. You play, bitch. I'm sorry. I got off a little in, on a tangent. But that's exactly what happened. I'm glad to see the handles are moving a little bit in a positive direction, but by no no means and no way is this young man out of the woods. No means and no way is the night, you know, still not cloudy for the family and the doctors and the people that are, you know, working on his behalf. Again, you have to thank the first responders for bringing him back to life. That's first and foremost because he was already dead. Now you got to, if he comes back to full consciousness, see if that had any effect on him. And that's the most important thing we could be worried about, praying for his recovery. Not who's going to win in the this, that, and the other. Who? That's an elitist mindset. And I don't want to hear nobody say they knew what they they signed up for. You don't sign up no matter what you do. When you sign up to get a driver's license, you don't sign imagining you're going to have a head-on collision and be dead. Because driving is a privilege. You don't have to drive. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to get off of here. If you like what you hear, subscribe, share, share the channel. Let's grow the channel. Uh, please, if anybody want to donate to the channel, there is links below in the description box. I would really appreciate it. We are in the process of trying to get more equipment so we can make uh, better authentic videos. And I appreciate every one of you out there for donating. Those of you who have. Uh, those of you who subscribe to the channel, I thank you. Those who have watched the commercials, because I know that's not easy to do, but you can just run and get you a little snack or something when you, and then come back. But I appreciate it. I appreciate every little thing that you do to help the channel grow. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.